Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of Dev Drawer. Um, I decided I wanted to take part in the 100, day, uh, 100 Days of Code Challenge on Twitter, and uh, one of the things that I've been wanting to learn for a while is Unity. Um, I know how to do C Sharp, so I'm not too worried about showcasing the, um, the code that controls this too much, but I actually want to show y'all how I uh, was able to learn Unity a little bit and create a game that looks like this. Um, so this interface may be familiar to you. It's uh, basically based off of the Crossy Road game, um, but instead of having a chicken or a rabbit hopping across the screen, I actually coded it to include my sons. Uh, the reason why I did that is because they're huge fans of the actual Crossy Road game. Um, they play it all the time every time we go to the game center that's uh, here locally, and um, they enjoy it. So I just wanted to kind of build something that I think that they would like, and having them included in it, um, I think it would make it an even funner experience for them. So I figured I would probably take on a pretty hard challenge uh, in order to uh, start my 100 Days of Coding challenge. Um, I've been working on this for a few weeks, and I've compiled the video um, of my progress that I've made throughout the entire thing. Um, I created all of the images that you see. I created the code that you um, that you don't see, but that's powering it. Um, but basically, I've created a rudimentary version of Crossy Road, and um, there's still some bugs that I need to work out. Uh, but I'll come back to that in another time. But for right now, I think um, it's to uh, where I want it to be at, and this is what it's going to look like whenever I get done with it. So, without further ado, let's get started on the actual project. So first thing, I am not familiar with Unity at all. Uh, this is actually the first time I've ever opened it up, and um, I had to learn a lot about 3D camera movement. So I spent a lot of time building that camera because Crossy Road is a very, um, it's a hard game to get at an angle. But once I got it to the angle that I wanted, I kind of created the grass for it, created the road and the water for it, and just created some prefabs so I can call them later. Um, and then I figured out there was an easier way to do it. So instead of creating the prefabs and then loading them on screen, I actually created a terrain generator that loops through the prefabs that I'm going to set up. I'll tell it how many I want to produce of the grass, of the road, uh, of the water, and then it'll actually loop through and it counts how far away the um, the player is from the terrain um, so that way that it makes sure that as they go into the game it starts adding new terrain to the level and then starts taking away terrain from the uh, from where they've already passed that um, so I set a few variables that I could call and customize within the um, uh, unity settings for this project um, basically it grabs the current user position and then generates ter terrain up to 30 places out in front of it so that something's always there and then as it gets to about 15 steps away from the 30 that it created it starts removing one at a time behind them um, so that kind of produced this screen where I could actually see the terrain and it give, gave me a better way to um, angle the camera because like I said Crossy Road is not a straight uh, plane that you're looking at is actually at an angle but you can still see far enough in front of you um, and you can still see what's kind of going on behind you so I played around with the camera a lot uh, during this phase of the project because it was it was very difficult to get that exact camera angle right but by using the um, terrain generator you can see on the left side that it created all of these different items in the game that I could actually reference um, and then be able to position that camera where I wanted it at. And this is still me kind of playing around trying to figure out how to move the camera in a 3D space. Not used to that yet. So once I got done, um, I started working on a new part where you can actually see the terrain and you know just working the camera some more and then I finally got it to a place where I wanted it at and then um, I wanted to mess with the, uh, the terrain count to start making it where it generates that terrain in the future. Um, one of the issues I was running into was that the player was starting at position one and so was the terrain. So essentially behind you, you could see that there was a drop off where the game was. Um, but I, I addressed that in a later part, but right now what I'm doing is I'm just trying to try to make the way that the it's, it's close enough to it that the camera 
whenever you start to hop along it'll actually move along with you and you'll be able to see the things coming up and you can tell the the spacing difference the height difference between the two sections so if you have a player and then you have a car the player isn't as big as the car it's smaller uh, but they're all based on these one pixel by one pixel by 100 pixel uh, cubes that I created for the um, the scenes um, so I'm doing some coding in the back again I'm not going to show the coding because it's something I'm already familiar with that wasn't the point of this project the point of this project was to kind of get used to how to use unity um, uh, but but essentially I'm making it where I can use these variables that you can see on the right side of the screen and I can set the grass in the road and set the maximum number that I want to be able to see um, and then I could also come in here and um, customize it a little bit um, the way that I could uh, add more um, or less uh, based on where the player is positioned at. Um, so one of the issues that I was running into with Unity is I didn't know how to switch from the game view to the uh, the canvas view. So I had to keep changing back and forth, and that's one reason why you see you know nothing's really moving on the screen right now. It's because I'm working in the other window. Um, eventually, I learned how to put them both together, and I could see everything side by side. But it was um, a little bit of a learning thing to get there. Um, also, at this point, I'm organizing my code. Um, I'm actually creating the uh, the scripts that I need, putting them in the folders, adding my materials, my prefabs, um, pretty much putting everything where I need it to go at so it's a little more organized. Um, so after I created the terrain generator, I created the terrain script so it tells it, um, it gives you the options that you need in order to customize um, how many you're displaying per water so you don't want to have a lot of water like this right here has a lot of water on it so I wanted to customize that a little bit in order to get that view just to where I wanted that now what we're fixing to see is this movement is something that was a huge step for me because I created this script that kinda of follows along the, with the character even though the character is not created yet I wanted to create it where every time you press the up or the W key it moves those tiles uh, up and then removes the ones behind you. So um, in the previous screen before I showed you the code it was it was moving those um, the elements and you can kinda see it taking it away from the back and moving it to the front. So that's kind of where I'm at right now and at this point I kinda had an epiphany. Um, I don't really know what happened but I was able to view the game and the scene at the same time which you can see I paused right here because I was like, whoa, what happened? I have no idea how I did that, and I probably still couldn't recreate it. But I was able to actually see the game and the scene at the same time. And as you can see here, that every time you step forward, it takes away that terrain, and then it adds new terrain to it. So for this video, it's going to be really short. Um, I just wanted to kind of show off the terrain. But in the next week, I'm going to be pushing out another video that's going to reflect what you see um, as a player and it's going to have the hop effect to it it's going to have moving it's going to be able to move with the character and I'm going to show you how I did that so this part of the video was a little boring uh, honestly it probably took me a lot longer than it needed to because I'm not familiar with unity but next week whenever I push out this part of the video um, I'm going to show you how I did the character movement and actually got the terrain to kind of follow him while he's moving it and then eventually I'll tie you the camera into it so the camera follows him as he moves um, but you can see I got a little hop going. Um, the terrain is finally starting to line up with where the player's at, which will allow me to start adding in some cars and some different motions and making them go left and right. Um, so I know this was a quick video, but I just wanted to kind of show you my progress so far. Um, but if you like the video, please subscribe. Um, give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Um, I plan on doing a few more of these um, developer tutorials. So um, thank you for now, and I'll catch you later.